that provides an opportunity for investors with a long-term point of view to actually capture meaningful ownership positions in these companies that are likely to yield meaningful cash flow generation events in the medium term. As we talk about those big drops for some of these names that you have long tracked, in some cases now down 70, 80 percent this year, what goes through your mind? We keep our perspective in the long term. You either believe that this decade is going to be one of technological innovation or you don't. It's clear that right now the market is not pricing assets based on their fundamentals. This is potentially a once in a generation business cycle for technology. I think people will look back on this five years from now and be like, I cannot believe that that company was available at these prices. Oh, Tesla is incredibly well positioned. It remains the number one exposure in our flagship strategy as well as in other strategies. And we think that the opportunity for um, robotax for autonomous electric vehicles that will transport you from place to place at less than the cash cost of operating your car. So not even taking into account the fact that you're you're saving the time and energy of being an amateur driver on the road is 20 or $30 trillion business value creation event. We think over the course of the decade, this is going to be a multiples of the value attributed to the global oil sector today. GM is an interesting exposure to the robo-taxi opportunity that we think is, is massively undervalued by the marketplace today. Wait, what? In this video, as the stock market meltdown continues, Ark Invest come out swinging, defending their strategy, highlighting many of the same thoughts that I have at this point in time. There are a lot of opportunities in the stock market, in my opinion, and stunningly suggest that General Motors stock, GM stock, you did it, Mary, you led it, it matters. It's a highly undervalued opportunity. We've got a lot to discuss, so let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment themes merch in the merch store so check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support well the stock market meltdown continues tesla stock today down over eight percent more than sixty dollars down per share and this rort wasn't just limited to tesla stock the nasdaq 100 getting absolutely smoked once again down over three percent it's been a brutal one month period down almost 15 percent i want to highlight coinbase for a moment now don't get me wrong over the short term this could go anywhere but I just want this on the record. I have a very strong feeling, of course, feeling isn't proof or evidence, but I have a very strong feeling that in X amount of years time, when people look back and see that Coinbase in 2022 was around a $10 billion market cap, they're gonna think that's a typo. All my spare cash is still going into Tesla, but if I had infinite cash after acquiring a 100% ownership stake in Tesla, I think Coinbase might be where my money went next. I just cannot for the life of me understand this. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Of course, this may not age well, but check back in 10 years time and let's see what happened. Just for the record, Coinbase down from its highs now almost 85%. The ARK flagship ETF, ARK-K, down over 10% today, getting absolutely slaughtered. Year to date, down over 60%. Over the five year, still positive territory. In fact, a better return than most investors would be expecting from an index fund. Rivian continuing to fall off a cliff as well, down almost 10% today, not surprised again. Since peak Rivian stock down almost 90%. However, the difference between Coinbase and Rivian, if it really needs pointing out, only one of those companies is tempting to scale Mount Everest, blindfolded naked with no food or water. And that's not Coinbase. Lucid getting smoked as well, down over 13% today. Also currently attempting to climb Mount Everest with no food or equipment. Government Modus, which we'll talk a lot more about in this video, down almost 4% today. Amazon down $69 per share, over 3%. Even Google's parent company Alphabet getting wrecked once again. Fraudstown Motors down 10% during hours, but something exciting happened after hours. Everybody's favorite joke of a company. Nikola Corporation down almost 9% today, yet still absurdly overvalued in my opinion at over $2 billion. So let's see what Brett Winton of ARK Invest has to say about Tesla stock, the stock market meltdown in general, some of the buying opportunities, disruptive innovation, and yes, that's right, General Motors stock. 
As we talk about those big drops for some of these names that you have long tracked, in some cases now down 70, 80 percent this year, what goes through your mind? Uh, we keep our um, perspective in the long term. Words of wisdom here, unsurprising answer. ARK Invest publicly and repeatedly remind investors that they have a five-year investment time horizon. So they're longer term focused. They don't give a flying f what's happening in the short term, other than the fact that it could present some opportunities. They're looking out five years into the future, trying to see where is the world in five years time. This is a major mistake a lot of investors make when there's panic in the stock market. Sometimes the emotions take over. Investors can often lose all sense of perspective if they had any in the first place. At least when it comes to investing, fear should never be the primary driver of your decision making. In fact, it should never enter the picture. For some, this is easier said than done. Having a long-term perspective and a strong investment thesis, really understanding why you own the assets you own and having a clear picture of what you believe the future will look like allows you to completely disregard the noise, the fear, the panic, the uncertainty in the stock market. Just keep your eye on the prize. And as we hear today, of course, the mainstream finance media always wants to talk about what's happening right this millisecond. Most of the talking heads in the finance media don't really care about anything beyond next quarter. If you're lucky, maybe next year on a good day, but it's usually next week at most. So of course, the mainstream media here asking ARK Invest about the market right now. What do you do when the shit's hitting the fan? Again, ARK pointing out, go back to our investment thesis, our five-year time horizon, our long-term perspective. That's what matters. This short-term noise is completely irrelevant to where things are headed. You either believe that this decade is going to be one of technological innovation or you don't. Uh, you either believe that AI the cost of AI training falling in half every nine months is going to yield massive productivity advances in it, or you don't. And it's clear that right now the market is not pricing assets based on their fundamentals. Absolutely correct. And this is an extremely important point for stock investors to understand. Brett's going to elaborate on this in just a moment. Asset prices are being uh, whipped around by asset flows between, between uh, asset classes by allocators. Very important to get this point. The reason many stocks at this point in time are getting absolutely slaughtered. The stock market doesn't take a vote every single day. Dear investors, what do you think this stock is worth today? Actual activity, buying and selling of the stocks themselves is what moves the prices. At this point in time, many big asset managers managing many, many, many tens, hundreds of billions of dollars of assets are dumping certain stocks, certain industries, just almost universally across the board. They're getting out of the gross stocks, going to safer stocks may not end so well. And that selling pressure is artificially suppressing the price of many stocks, many assets at this point in time. And so from our perspective, uh, you're getting amazing sale prices in innovation assets. And we believe that everybody needs to have a meaningful exposure to innovation in their portfolio. Personally, I find this hard to argue with. Many investors who um, have benchmark exposures to uh, traditional indices have unintentional innovation shorts. What an absolute corker of a point that might be an Australian expression. So if you don't get it, uh, well, you'll figure it out in context. Brett's right here. This is a great way of summing things up. What he's essentially saying here is if investors don't have exposure to innovation, they're almost in effect short innovation by the stocks that they do hold that are likely to get disrupted. Shout out to the imminent tsunami of bankruptcies by said disruptive innovative technologies. In short, ha, get it? Ha, ha, ha. That wasn't funny, was it? If you're not long innovation, by default, you're automatically short. You're on the other end of that. The two sides of the same coin. You can't sit out innovation and not be betting against it because innovation is what's going to disrupt the current assets you're holding while avoiding these innovative stocks. Where if this really is, uh, if, if kind of being able to get uh, a cancer diagnosis from a blood vial is a meaningful advance and gonna drive uh, you know billions of dollars in revenue, then assets will appreciate on the back end of that and that will put um, some traditional service providers at risk. If EV autonomous trucks are going to be cost competitive with freight rail over the course of this business cycle, then those traditional rail lines are actually going to be materially less valuable than you currently think they're going to be. And so that position in your core index exposure is going to be put into stress. So you better own the innovation opportunity that's on the back end of that in the event that these technologies promises come to fruition. Brett, it all makes sense to invest in innovation early on, but to make that a real possibility, it kind of seems like you have to have these cash cushions. It's the very cash cushions that perhaps drove a lot of these big tech gains in the last two years. But if you look at some of these companies, even the EV spaces, biotech, for example, they don't have the cash cushions to make that a reality. How do you square that with this inflationary environment where perhaps cash is king? Well, I don't think that's true uniformly across the technology space. If you look at, for instance, Zoom, it's massive 
massive fleet cash flow positive. And, and I think that in, in some ways, investors either want the companies to generate cash and then they punish them on kind of the cash flow generation that they're yielding, or they say, oh, oh, these companies need cash in their pocket. In the biotech space, certainly in the therapeutics um, business, those are businesses where you are spending R&D to generate pipelines that will ultimately yield potential cures to uh, rare diseases. And so those companies are frequently partnering with larger companies to um, to bring cash onto their books and, and upfront some of the potential revenue recognition that would come from those pipeline assets. And, uh, you know, over the last three years, we've seen amazing progression in demonstration of capabilities in the likes of GeneEdit. Um, so I think that the, at this moment in the marketplace, yes, I think that um, traders are going out there and looking at the cash burn of, of every position in the market saying, uh, we're going to try to aggressively target and short those companies that are going to have to raise at any time over the next year. And that provides an opportunity for investors with a long-term point of view to actually capture meaningful uh, ownership positions in these companies that are likely to yield uh, meaningful, meaningful cash flow generation events in the medium term. Again, completely agree. I mean, I said the exact same thing back in March 2020, April 2020, May 2020 when everyone thought the world was ending. Well, almost everyone. As Brett points out, the stocks that are getting hit hardest at the moment are those investors require a longer time perspective to actually see and understand. It's not what's happening today, next quarter, next week. It's what's happening in half a decade, a decade's time. Tesla stock's the perfect example of this. It was evident, and I mean like painfully obvious. After the Model 3 ramp was sorted out, the Tesla would be printing stupid amounts of money within just a few years' time. Everyone who didn't really dig deep enough or have a long time perspective, however, was looking at Tesla's current income, current profits, current cash flow, current free cash and thinking, oh my God, they're going bankrupt. Short time perspective plus investing in stocks can lead to suboptimal outcomes. I'm truly shocked how many bargains are available right now. The long and short of it, <laughs> it uh, f- why, why just, there are incredible bargains available in the stock market at this point in time. Many of them, at least in my opinion, clearly associated with disruptive innovation and companies that today are investing heavily for future cash flows that many investors with a short term perspective or a tiny brain just can't see. Wait, was one of those superfluous? As an innovation manager that's taking, uh, you know, doing fundamental work on the cash flow generative capabilities of the assets in these companies, this is a great opportunity. Uh, And that's what we're focused on. And Brett, just to to try to put your comments in context with this violent selling that we have seen in the broader market every day, people are trying to figure out, have we possibly reached a bottom from all this selling pressure for the broader market? There is this strong narrative out there that there could be more challenging times ahead for technology. You alluded to those who might be betting against this sector right now. How do you approach that? I mean, you're long-term in thinking, you made that very clear. Are you prepared to accept more pain for this sector in the short term. Listen, our clients hire us to to provide a concentrated exposure to disruptive innovation that we believe will recognize and to massive value appreciation over the medium term. And that's exactly what we seek to provide to them. You know, and we communicate to clients that that's what we're going to do. The worst thing we could do for our clients would be to suddenly change our spot and say, oh, we're, we're worried about, um, you know, the, the marginal inflation numbers. And so we're going to um, kind of back off on our aggressive investments in technologies that are going to change the world. We think that clients um, of our strategies size their positions in a responsible way relative to the rest of their portfolios so that they can take advantage of these kinds of downdrafts that are not being driven by fundamentals and buy into and at least um, keep a a relatively stable um, exposure to our types of strategies or even double down. Uh, And that's what you've seen. You've seen client inflows into our strategies because people understand that the medium term um, recognition of what's going on in technology is going to result in um, market business value creation. This is not a, this is potentially a once in a generation business cycle for technology. And I think people understand that they need to have a, a meaningful technology exposure to take advantage. Brett, let's talk about some of the individual holdings within the ARC Innovation 
Pension Fund. I want to talk about Tesla and GM in particular. Tesla, for a long time now, has been one of the major holdings. But in the last quarter, it looks like uh, the fund sold about $13 million of the stock and recently bought GM shares. I have to ask about Tesla's role in the EV universe. Do you think it's losing market share to some of these newer names? And to what extent? Oh, Tesla is incredibly well positioned. It remains the number one exposure in our flagship strategy as well as in other strategies. And we think that the opportunity for um, robotax for autonomous electric vehicles that will transport you from place to place at less than the cash cost of operating your car. So not even taking into account the fact that you're you're saving the time and energy of being an amateur driver on the road is a um, 20 or $30 trillion business value creation event. We think over the course of the decade, this is going to be uh, at uh, multiples of the value attributed to the global oil sector today. The business platforms that occupy um, this robo taxi um, opportunity. And so there is room for both multiple winners and for an assessment that we can't be sure who exactly is going to operate in that spot. Cruise automation inside of GM is demonstrably ahead of the field in terms of capability. They have a commercial service operating in San Francisco today. They've expanded to most of San Francisco. If they're able to use that position to kind of secure a footprint and select cities in the U.S., that would be incredibly valuable. On this, I most definitely disagree. While I understand the point that Brett's making here, they can get a foothold in some key areas, surely that's a good thing, right? But here's the problem, as I mentioned a million times in the past, the strategy of practically every mobility company providing autonomous rides in certain select areas is doomed from the get. If your service requires pre-mapping any area that you plan to offer the service in high definition, then using expensive sensors, including LiDAR, bounce a signal off every object surrounding you just to make sure that everything's the way that it should be and you know exactly where you are on your pre-map route, you have a service that is simply not scalable. And that would be fine if there wasn't a superior competing solution, one that didn't face the same constraints, one that was easily and rapidly and widely scalable Scalable. Shout out to Tesla. And don't get me wrong here, it may turn out that cruise is the only thing of any value left within General Motors by the end of this decade. But I believe autonomy is a winner takes most market. And I also believe that GM is an absolute cluster of a company with incompetent leadership, one whose stock I wouldn't touch with a 420 quadrillion light year long pole. But I do admire Ark's courage, and I also understand their strategy. And to be honest, this may actually pay off over the short or medium term. If it looks like Cruise is making progress, the service continues to roll out, if all Tesla's robotaxis are ubiquitous, and investors fail to realize that once Tesla solves autonomy, and next minute it's 10 times safer than human drivers, then 50, then 100, services like Cruise, etc., are completely f- Just like today, companies like Uber and Lyft are completely f- because autonomous robotaxis are already available in some areas and many others coming soon. In a nutshell, autonomous hail on demand robotaxi services today that use HD mapping and LiDAR are already obsolete. They're already being disrupted by Tesla's strategy. A generalized solution to autonomy deployed at scale with Tesla's fleet, no one catches Tesla. Sure, there'll be many, many, many companies that can have small successes operating in tiny geographical areas around the world, pre-mapping LiDAR, great. But the opportunity is so limited when we know there's a company like Tesla with a completely different strategy that doesn't have the same limitations that can be widely and rapidly deployed and will continue to get better. And not only will continue to get better, but due to Tesla's existing and future scale, will get better at a faster rate than anyone else's technology to the point where it's inevitable at some point in the future, most other companies on earth offering robotaxi slash autonomous vehicles will be licensing their software from Tesla. If not, they'll know they have blood on their hands by using inferior software. At some point in time, using Tesla's autonomous software is gonna be a moral obligation. So while I acknowledge there's some value to having a tiny footprint early on in a tiny market, in a tiny area with an inferior product and an inferior solution that will never be cost competitive or as safe as what's obviously going to be number one, Tesla's autopilot software. GM to me is far too deeply a flawed company and too incompetently managed for me to go anywhere near. Of course, ARK Invest's actions speak louder than their words. Tesla's still the largest position in their flagship fund and many others. GM most definitely not. They might make money on this trade, but I'll tell you what, I prefer not to bet on losers. In fact, I'd rather just bet on the clear winner and only 
the clear winner. And we think Tesla's largest deployed fleet of robots in the world, which is what their cars are, gives them a tremendous data advantage to scalably solve that problem. So you can believe in, in both companies and the and the strategies that the companies have. Uh, and so that's it's it's not a you know Tesla or GM. It's within our automation and robotics portfolio. GM is an interesting exposure to the robo taxi opportunity that we think is is massively undervalued by the marketplace today. Let me know what you guys and girls think. Is GM an undervalued opportunity in the stock market today in terms of its autonomous solution? You have obviously this uh, exposure to Coinbase as well. What was your reaction to the quarterly results there? I mean, I think that the 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 quarterly results were largely as we expected. We knew that trading volumes were down. I think that the the fact is this is a, a company with the enterprise value of, of below $10 billion now, and um, they're likely to be one of the leading companies in providing the full vertically integrated suite of financial services that, that will transmit through the, the crypto asset market. Uh, and uh, I, I think people will look back on this five years from now and be like, I cannot believe that that company was available at these prices. Could not agree more. I mean, I literally cannot believe that Coinbase today is around a $10 billion market cap. Again, it's not investment advice, so I could totally be wrong, but I am thinking exactly what Brett and ARK Invest are thinking. It's not just Coinbase. There are a lot of what appear to be incredible buying opportunities that just do not make sense. Again, going back to the reason that these stocks are getting crushed so much, it's not to do with the fundamentals of the companies. It's not to do with execution. It's to do with money managers at this point in time, dumping growth stocks, panicking back to safer asset classes. You almost have this self-fulfilling prophecy. If people are running away from growth stocks into the safe stocks, almost by default, the safe stocks are gonna perform better than the growth stocks, everyone's dumping but for this selling and buying activity which is directly temporarily and artificially suppressing the price of growth assets is a completely unrelated to the execution of any of these companies b completely unrelated to what the future looks like and the future cash flows of said companies and c and i want to underscore this temporary um, because the the entire financial services sector is going to have to transition to incorporate the capabilities that that um, public blockchains provide to end customers to own and transfer digital assets around the world. And Coinbase is in the 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 catbird seat in terms of providing those services. And so um, we think it's an incredible value, and and that it's a management team that knows how to invest into the opportunities that lie in front of it in an intelligent and aggressive way. Once again, hard to argue. And for the record, it's not just Coinbase. I mean, I've been looking at Tesla for the last couple of months going, dude, what the actual is going on right now? I cannot believe it. That's why I'm loading up. Uh, I don't want to incriminate myself too much, but I've definitely invested absolutely every spare dollar and cent I possibly could have, and maybe a little more. Again, I could be wrong, but if I'm not, if Tesla performs even close to my Tesla stock price targets that run out over the next decade, by the way, you can access those exclusively on Patreon at the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment, Tesla stock still today, the best risk adjusted opportunity I'm aware of in the stock market. With each passing day, as the panic continues, the selling out of growth stocks continues to push prices down artificially. Bargains are popping up left, right and center. Let me know in the comments below, what have you guys and girls been buying in the recent panic? Or have you been panicking, crying in the corner and asking for daddy to hold you? As the stock market meltdown continues, keep your wits about you, put your emotions to the side, engage your logical cognitive faculties. If you have any, if you don't, stay the f away from investing. And happy bargain hunting. Very interesting decision here from ARK Invest to buy a GM stock. But in fairness, they're not investing in General Motors, the automobile manufacturer, but getting a slice of cruise automation. Let's see how that one pans out. Don't forget, you can join Patreon with the card in the corner, link it to pinned comment. Well over 100 exclusive Q&A videos on just about every topic you can imagine. Loads of other exclusive content and perks, plus my up-to-date Tesla stock price targets. And you can also follow me on Twitter, at Stephen Mark Ryan. I think I'm still in Twitter prison. My tweets aren't reaching everybody. I don't know, maybe that ban will go away. Maybe it won't. But at this point in time, the only accounts that are seeing any of my tweets are people who follow me already or have interacted with me many times and have an apparently very close connection to my account. Publicly criticize Twitter? Get shadow banned. Well, guess what? I'm going to continue to speak my mind and spit facts irrespective of the consequences. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. 
If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment themed merch in the merch store. If you wanna take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments, or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon, or watch the next video.